recently, you really find out your real friends. So I'm actually thankful all that bad shit happened to me. I lost a ton of money, whatever, because I found out my true friends. And now that I'm on the come up again, I'm going to be with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. We really do go th through things for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, life, you can't really appreciate the good without experiencing the bad. How would you ever really appreciate the good in life? Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right, guys, we are here on the Digital Social Hour. Abby Rayo is in the building today. How's it going? Hello, good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. 2024 just started. Any exciting plans coming up for you? You know, life. Nice. haven't really written anything on my vision board yet no but uh family um a few exciting things that i'm working on that like i'm not fully ready to talk about yet but um just thankful to be alive nice. you know sounds like a little bit of self-reflection this year D oh always yeah that's important as, as humans just wrapped up in the la scene in business you get so wrapped up and barely take any time for yourself sometimes you know 100 percent. yeah i think Family is everything at the end of the day, and I think L.A. definitely is easy to get wrapped in and, and lost in, and that's something that I've really tried to make sure that I don't do. Yeah. So how long have you been in L.A.? Five years now. Okay. So yeah. you're getting, getting your circle and everything established? and Yes, it's extremely small, but, right. <laughs> but, but yes, I have, I would say, four real friends. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool because I try to keep my, my best friends on one hand. It's like a rule I have. Oh, really? Just because like I, I used to have so many friends, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it just wasn't authentic. I feel right. like you, you should have a few key friends and that's really all you need in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, but I've never really been the type to have like a large group of friends. Mm. I feel like I can't really connect in, in a big crowd or I've never like felt comfortable even growing up. Uh, I'm more of like a one-on-one. -on -one. So mm. I think I'd rather have like very few, very deep relationships than kind of just like small talk. That. Yeah, or, yeah. You know. Growing up, so where were you at before LA? Louisiana. Wow, that's a big change. Very big, yes. I've never been there, but I've heard the food is good. Oh, it's <laughs> it's unlike anywhere. It really is. It's very, very special. Um. The food in New Orleans, the warmth there, just people are very, very warm in the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, I obviously love California. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But um, Louisiana, not quite as beautiful, but the people are very beautiful. That makes sense. What prompted the move out here? Was it business related? Um, it just kind of happened. It was God. It, I never planned it. It just kind of all happened. Mm. And life led me here. Wow. So it yeah. wasn't like I'm moving here. Just no, it, it was, it was, I kind of felt, I've talked about it a little bit before, but I kind of felt like something was about to happen before it happened. But, um, I used to be a cosmetologist mm -hmm. and so I was at work one day and the only way that I could describe it looking back is I started to feel like I was about to not be there anymore, which didn't make any sense because I was just now a year into my career, super happy, loved it. Um, but I had this weird feeling like something was about to happen. Hmm. And I told my best friend one day after work and then she was like, you're scaring me. I was like, I'm scared. Cause I, I had this feeling and I was like, I don't know if it's good or bad, but hmm. something's happening. And like two weeks later, I got invited to this event out here and didn't really connect the two. I happened to have that weekend off. I went and then just the people I met the way things happened, it just, I started kind of blowing up on the internet overnight and a girl that I met out here, um, was like, I'm moving out here. You're coming with me. Like we're doing it. And mm -hmm. I just knew in my soul, I had to just go. And I just left everything. I was 21. So I was like, okay, if it doesn't work out, just come back home. Yeah. And then my whole life changed. So. Wow. So you followed your gut instinct. Yes. It was a very weird Yes, gut instinct, kind of like feeling it before it happened yeah. type of thing. No, I'm super spiritual, so I'm, I'm into that type of stuff. Sometimes you got to just go with it and you don't know what's going to happen, but here you are now, so. Yeah, it was the scariest 
scariest, most terrifying thing I've ever done. Mm. Uh, I feel like when I first came here, I didn't even sleep right for like three months. I still had that knot, those knots in my stomach because it was just coming to L.A., uh, it's very hard at first Mm. um, because it's just a lot, especially if you're from a small town or a more normal area. I say normal, but normal is different for everybody. But um, it's just a lot going on. And so I think you either push through or you kind of just – go back home with your tail tucked between your legs. Yeah. But. You see a lot of people that happens to, they come here, it's not what they thought and they go home within a year or two. Um, I've, I've seen that for sure. Um, and no fault on, on them. It's just, it, it's psychologically like not, I think I had an easier, um, path, I guess, because really LA is so about who, you know, and how many followers you have. Mm. And I kind of got lucky in that sense. So I think, um, you know, because of followers and because of the path that I've had and just being lucky, yeah. um, you know, the right time, the right place, the right people, the right moment. Um, I never really had to deal with feeling kind of not cool enough. I mm. kind of was just in the crowd cause I had the numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but seeing the way that other people got treated definitely was like, damn, this yeah. place is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, out here, followers are social currency. It's one of the first questions you get asked at an event, at a party. Mm-hmm. So when you don't have that following, people just ignore you, right? It reminds me of that Black Mirror episode. I've seen the social it, currency one? Yes. Yeah. It's it's literally like that. Wow. That's exactly crazy. like that. I'm sure you've experienced that too. So I grew up in Jersey. No one gave a shit, honestly, how many followers you really? are. Really? Oh, then, but I mean, how long have you been in kind of like this scene? Oh, yeah. So I moved to LA from Jersey, but it was during the pandemic. So mm-hmm. I didn't really go to events. I didn't get to experience it. Now I'm in Vegas. People kind of care out there, but I didn't get the full experience you're talking about for sure. But I, oh, I hear okay. about it. It's pretty nuts to me. I mean, I don't care about anyone I work with, how many followers they have. Some people I work with don't even have social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're probably happier (laughs) probably i've had podcast guests on that are billionaires without social media yeah no no and i don't mean to sound ungrateful i'm very 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 grateful but i think that there's a balance um definitely definitely a balance i think it can be psychologically damaging i think it's a great way for people to connect and (laughs) things to really great fun information to be spread Mm -hmm. you know very easily and very inspiring loving funny things but i think it can also be very damaging, especially how it's escalated just even since I started. Right. And I've seen you say on another podcast, you know, a crazy fan broke in your house. That's crazy. I mean, that doesn't come to just normal people. It was a stalker, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, when I lived with an ex that I was dating and, um, it was kind of a famous house Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was a really big wake up call for me. Um, I just couldn't believe that the person like knew my name and and was trying to get into the house and get in knew where my room was. Whoa. Like I just was like, wait, I'm being like watched. <laughs> like it's just that was kind of a weird realization for me, um, and scary. Mm. But I I'm very spiritual as well, and I'm big on energy, and I kind of just feel like I have a protective energy around me, so I don't invite that kind of yeah hecticness but that situation was definitely like okay you need to like be careful be aware of your Mm -hmm. surroundings um it was extremely scary that's important yeah i actually have a spiritual coach and she always talks about putting up that shield because you never know who's going to try to like penetrate your life use use you in the wrong way yeah well it's just also so many eyes you know excuse me so many eyes and just so much energy going towards you and all that energy is not necessarily good. Mm. So that was something that also kind of freaked me out um, with the whole situation, just the psychology of it all. I was just like, I couldn't, it's like you see the numbers on a screen, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't, for me, it doesn't really correlate. I feel that. When you were blowing up, what was that feeling like? Just gaining tons of followers every single day? Um, I would say I had like two high points. The first one. Um. Are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below and here's the episode, guys. I was dating someone and I think I was kind of like in also happening happening really fast. Didn't really think about my what I wanted to do or say I was just kind of looking up 
to a person and kind of like, it was like a rush. It was like, uh, it's, it's an indescribable feeling. I think I went from being a cosmetologist, working with people one-on-one, f- having that feeling at the end of the day of like, I made a difference and I made someone happy. You're connecting with people to my life just changed so drastically to where people were showing up, knowing where I lived, all this stuff. And, um, I was of course excited and, you know, every human, you know, to say you don't like that attention would be a lie. I mean, it's a, it's, it's It's a rush, but it's also kind of like, I started to feel sad. Mm. I don't know if it was a mixture of like, why me? I, I don't deserve this. Or um, I started to feel like I was part of what was wrong with the world. Hmm. You know? Interesting. Because I was scared to, or I didn't know how to make content of being me. Oh, it was kind it. of like this persona right. of me. And then it was like it all happened. And then I looked at it and I was like, wait, this isn't me. It kind of feels icky, you yeah. know? Um, so odd. But I think over time, it got better. Yeah, I feel that everything's just happening so fast. You're in the mix of things, just going along with it. But before you know it, six months in and you're like, wait, where's my own personal brand? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, that rush feels good. But then just like everything, it's kind of like if you have a brand new car, you're all excited. And then six months later, it's just you just get in your car. It's it's a car. Yeah. So it, humans, you know, you get used to things and then that rush and that excitement ends. And then you're kind of like, I think I was left with where's my meaning? Where's mm. my sense of like true purpose? And after um, I really dealt with that, I just started going and putting my focus more onto my family again. And that that helped a lot. Yeah, same with me, honestly, because when I got so wrapped up in business, I neglected family and friends. And the past year or two, I've really made an effort to call my mom every day. I used to not even call her once a, every four months, honestly. That's so important. And it's not like, I feel like in this world, when you do go through something like that, it feels maybe a little isolating or a little bit like... Um, hard to talk to the people in your life at least at a certain point because you feel like maybe oh they can't relate or I don't want to burden them with my things that are going on in my life Mm -hmm. because you know they're going to be like oh really (laughs) oh sorry for you you know were they supportive when you moved out to LA oh yes oh they were blessed yes very blessed my my parents were very very supportive nice that's that's important I think there's sometimes a divide there when parents don't support their kids' dreams or aspirations. Mm -hmm. My parents are really young, so I think maybe that has something to do with it, their generation. Right. Um, You know, um, luckily, I have to say my grandparents are also very supportive. Nice. But um, my parents are 45, and I'm 26. That is crazy. So they had you at 19? My mom got pregnant at 17 and had me at 18. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Yeah. Her and my dad were together since they were 12 years old. They were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. Fifth grade, sixth grade. That's that's young. Super young. And um, obviously I was unplanned, but thank Mm. God my mom kept me and that took a lot of courage and I'm glad that she did and yeah, I can't imagine myself having kids at 18. I was a degenerate, drinking, <laughs> Absolutely smoking. Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't do any of that anymore. Yeah, it's it's really weird. I have a um, one of my sisters is eight, hmm. and we are the exact same age difference. So she was born when I was 18, hmm. I think, or she's going to be nine this year, something like that. And uh, it's just weird to think that when she was born – I was the age that my mom was when I was born. And I was like, I can't imagine this being my child. I can't imagine having a child right now. Right. I mean, any life that she could have had or built, it just, in that moment, she knew what the decision she'd made. And she just said, there's no other decision in her mind. And she just had me. And that's, I really, especially as I've gotten older and understand more about life, mm-hmm. it's just like, I see the sacrifice, her yeah. and my father, you know? Wow. That's powerful. Is your sister using social media yet? Because I know kids that age are actually using it, which is crazy to me. Yeah. So I have two little sisters um, that are eight and 13. And then my mom and my stepdad have um, 
my brother Seth, who's 18, and then I have a another brother who we were raised together, but we're the same age. Mm. So they have social media. The two little sisters, eight-year-old, absolutely not. No. <laughs> She's completely shielded from all of that. Nice. No, not allowed to see TikTok. Um, she, the only thing that she has is she has Snapchat, mm. but she only is friends with her family. Got it. And she just uses it to talk to us. That makes sense. Um, but the 13-year-old just got an Instagram, Ooh. but it's ran by my stepmom. So okay. like she has it logged in on her phone and she can see everything. The and they're very, very, very good kids. So yeah, I think I started Instagram in high school. I was probably 15, 16, but the kids these days are starting at six, seven, yeah, that, eight. That's it's, wild. It's nuts. That's wild. And I've had like extensive talks with them and, and with Emily cause she's older, but, um, I've had talks with her and, and she has a really good head on her shoulder. She's a really, really good kid. So that's cool. So you're I think not... as long as you have that communication open and you know, cause I also like her friends have it. You, at some point you don't want your kids to feel like weird or isolated, you know? That's so true. I think it's kind of like, as the times change, there's, I think for every parent, every child is different. So it's kind of like, it's up to their discretion and what their heart feels is, is right. Yeah. You know? If they told you they wanted to be an influencer like yourself, what would your advice be? Um, obviously, I believe anything is possible. I think you can do anything you want to do, but um, you can't really say, oh, I want to be an influencer because it's, it's especially now, it's so um, saturated. Mm. Um, doesn't mean it won't happen for you. It's just... I've always told them no matter what you want to do, you have to make sure you have some sort of education. Doesn't mean you have to go to a university necessarily, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless you want to be a lawyer, um, which my stepmom's a lawyer. So I'm like, if you want to be a lawyer like mom, then you that would require school. But getting a trade and something that you're really good at and harnessing that and just furthering that is number one. And then on the side, if you want to do something fun, like whether it's makeup or, um, you know, if you they wanted to be an influencer or YouTube, that's something you could do on the side. And then if it takes off, then run with it. But yeah. you can't really, my advice to them as my siblings would be not to solely focus on that, you know? Absolutely. It sounds like despite your millions of followers, you really value privacy in your life. Yeah, I do. I think it's, scary because just you know going through times on the internet where when everybody really loves you and like you're at those high points it feels really really good but mm -hmm. times where I've been at a low point publicly um really psychologically kind of was like okay I have to make sure that I don't value this so much or put so much of myself in it that I forget me mm. or who I am. And so I think like I definitely in the past couple of years have put a lot of boundaries up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as time goes on, maybe some of those will come down. But as far as my family and, and like my siblings or like one day when I have children, I, you know, things change. But I, I don't see myself ever sharing them on social media ever. Wow. Yeah, Ever. I keep my date. People don't even know I have a, a, a girlfriend. I've had a girlfriend for six years, but I keep it super private. Like no photos of her. If we have kids, same thing. I'm not posting. I really value that part of our lives, honestly. And she's very private, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how. I mean, I think whenever I'm married, I don't think that's necessarily something I would hide because especially it's like if I'm married, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to be proud of that. Yeah. Um, but it, I don't know that I would want to expose mainly my children to that. Right. Um, just because thinking about, and I'm not trying to judge any influencers or any people that do share their children. That's their discretion and their choice. But the way I think is like the world is so beautiful, but also very cruel. And I'm really big on energy. And I just couldn't imagine my angel baby, like, coming into this world and then posting a photo and like someone saying something about them mm. or just picking them apart or looking at them or look at this bait. Like it's just when you're, it's different when you, you're kind of like, you know, have a different career and you're in a normal town and it's just Facebook with all your family. Yeah. Then when you have like millions of followers and also it's kind of like, they don't follow me to see my baby, right. nor do they need to see my baby, yeah. you know? 
there's so much negativity on social media. It's a game you got to play though, if you're a content creator and you just got to figure out ways to kind of block it out. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. That's been a journey, but I think I'm definitely at a better place now because psychologically, like I said, it's, it's definitely, it plays with the, it does with the mind. It used to get to me heavy, but also you mentioned being, you know, being at a low point. I had one recently. You really find out your real friends. So I'm actually thankful all that bad shit happened to me. I lost a ton of money, whatever, because I found out my true friends. And now that I'm on the come up again, I'm going to be with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost, it, it's crazy. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're okay and like moving past that because I really am a firm believer that we really do go th- through things for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, you know, life, you can't really appreciate the good without experiencing the bad. How would you ever really appreciate the good in life? Um, absolutely firm believer in that I mean you can't just only experience good things yeah. like as much as that sounds good you won't like you said you won't appreciate it without some bad things as well or be able to connect with other people that have been through hard things yeah that's one thing that I'm so grateful for when I think about things that I've been through in my life and in my childhood um, I feel like the times in life when I've been able to connect with other people that have gone through similar things or maybe help somebody um, it's a lot easier to be there for someone when you can actually relate, mm. you know, and, yeah. and, and you know what maybe something like that feels like. It's a lot easier to be there for somebody. Yeah. I, I saw you on Brian Goldstein's podcast. That's a friend of mine talking about your rough childhood, actually, which is crazy because you don't realize how much trauma you have until later. And my parents got divorced. I just thought that was normal, honestly, not having a dad growing up, father figure. But it's important to go back and, you know, address those traumas rather than ignore it because it, it really compiles up. 100%. How old are you, by the I'm way? 26. Oh, we're the same age. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm an yeah. Aquarius. Oh, nice. I'm what a Cancer. You? Oh, my fiance is a Cancer. Aw. Yeah, so we get along for sure. Awesome. Yeah, Aquariuses are incredible. I love them. Good. I'm big into that stuff. I know it's, it's crazy me saying this now because I was so skeptical growing up. Really? Of zodiac signs, of horoscopes, of numerology all that stuff yeah yeah i think there's there's something there to it because i think it's interesting like where we were and where the planets were and um you know um what's the word i'm looking for and not accordance but like when we were born where they were um but obviously god is Mm -hmm. number one i think if there's a mix between the two i think as long as you keep god number one in, in me personally um I think that looking into all those things are super fun and I think there has to be some truth to it because I'm such a cancer. Like I mean, I'm so emotional and deep and like sappy and Yeah. I all mean of that. it's not a coincidence. At this point I'll be at random dinners and I'll just read people's zodiac signs or whatever online and they'll be like, That's so accurate. And it's happened like twenty, thirty times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally random people I've ne- never met before. Oh wow. So I, I feel like it's not a coincidence at this, at this point. No, I, I'm with you. Yeah. And it's actually getting in touch with my spiritual side has helped a lot with my mental health too. I used to have terrible anxiety, even depression. I saw you dealt with similar things. Has that helped you in your journey as well? Um, I think I've had ups and downs with it. Um, I think honestly, recently I've been going through a really, really, really difficult time, mm. um, but I'm starting to kind of come out of it and uh, pull myself back up again. I think, you know, like I said, life has highs and lows. And I think this year feels good for me. Um, But yeah, I think a big thing for me as well, which I've never, ever, ever talked about, Mm. is um, smoking Really? Was something that since I was younger – um, I started doing, I think, to escape mm. from how I was feeling and some of my emotions. Um, and I think I started at like 13 or 14 years old. Wow. Yeah. And um, never really was a big drinker, but always was just kind of a stoner at heart. Yeah. Um, but I think smoking anything at the end of the day is toxic to your body. I mean, it's going to constrict your blood vessels. It's Mm -hmm. putting soot into your lungs. It's just not good for you. And, um, also I noticed, uh, so I had stopped smoking weed for good. 
Um, and I stopped for like a year, year and a half and I felt way better, more clear. And then I kind of just got back into it. And, um, recently I actually quit again, mm. uh, like two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, cause I was having a talk with my stepmom. We're really close and we were just talking about weed and she's like, no, I'm not like because I'm very open with my family, very, very open. And she was just like, I just remember you telling me that when you stopped, you just felt so much more like clear minded and and happy and like less like your mood felt more stable. Mm. And I had forgotten that I said that. Wow. I was like, yeah, I did say that. And I think when I started <laughs> again, I kind of was like, oh, I'm just going to do this for a little and then I can always like stop. But I had that conversation with myself recently. I was like, Abby, you got to get back on your shit again mm. and start putting your health first. And, you know, it, it's a commitment, you know. I'll agree. And I know we'll probably get some hate for this because a lot of people smoke weed. But for me, it caused more anxiety, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like I didn't even know what anxiety was, but I used to smoke a lot in high school mm -hmm. and just have anxiety attacks. I just thought it was being high. But yeah. it would literally be like a panic attack and it was because of weed. Yeah. And I think just everybody's brain is different also. Yeah. You know, it affects people differently. And I think at the end of the day, also weed is not how it was years ago. Right. It's way stronger now. Oh my God. So it's like, that's what also started happening to me was I was like, dude, this is not even, what do I <laughs> This is not when I was like 15 smoking weed, like some little like weed, right. like a little no, and I, then you'd just be like happy watching tea. Like, I just feel like it was not near as strong. Now it's like you take one hit of something and you're like. You're stoned. It's gone. Like and it's like, that's not cool. No, it's really like 40% THC now. I remember I took a hit of medical weed once when I was in Jersey. Mm -hmm. I ended up in the hospital. I mean, it's like way too strong now. Yeah, I think that's something that, you know, I think weed recreationally, obviously alcohol is legal. It's not like the worst thing in the world. If I had a choice between getting plastered or getting stoned, I'd probably choose getting stoned. But everything in moderation. You know, yeah. I think if you make that a daily part of your life or a huge component, that's not good. It's not you know? good because you wake up the next morning and you feel a little groggy as well. Oh, definitely. I noticed that big time. Yeah. Big time. Wow. I didn't know we talked so much about weed. That's, that's funny looking back. I used to be a huge stoner, like massive, like three to five times a day. Oh, yeah. It was bad. I mean, there's nothing to do in cold Jersey. I feel that. I feel that. I was more of like every night type of thing. Damn. Yeah. I'm not saying I've never smoked during the day, but <laughs> mostly it would be kind of like my wind down thing at night. Yeah. You know? But um, another thing that I kind of like... I worked with this brain doctor, Dr. Amen, and I learned so, so, so much from him. Mm. And um, he did a study with... I think it was... Don't quote me on this, but something like 1,200 marijuana users' brains in correlation with Alzheimer's. Wow. And um, yeah, uh, my grandfather passed away from Alzheimer's probably like – it wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. Definitely – I don't want to spitball, but maybe like a couple months ago, four months ago, five mm -hmm. months ago. And um, it's just kind of like – even if there's a chance that I'm predisposed to that, it's kind of like, why would I do things all the time that it's like going to make that chance worse? Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. I didn't know there was a correlation between and Alzheimer's. Yeah, there is. And I mean, wow. think about it. If it's anything, anything that's damaging your brain or anything that's constricting your blood vessels is going to do that. So I think like, you know, the stoners out there, I'm not trying to say like, you're going to die, but just keep in mind that everything in moderation, right. I think is good. It's good to know. I actually have the Alzheimer's gene. I took a 23andMe test. So that's, that's good to know. Thank you. What else did you learn on that brain scan? Um, I learned that it was really emotional for me because I think like in my childhood, I had a lot of a really just hectic family issues, um, unfortunately, and went through a lot of uh, traumatic events growing up. Mm -hmm. My life was not good. I felt unsafe pretty much my whole childhood. Wow. And so he taught me that like during those years, your brain is developing. And so I wondered why I felt the way I did. And so when I saw my brain scan, it actually showed all the trauma in my brain. And so I had this thing called the diamond pattern, mm -hmm. which kind of like the anxiety portion, the worry, like 
um, emotional brain. It was all lit up way more than it should be. Dang. So it kind of made sense as to why like sometimes my emotions or sometimes my anxiety or my worry, like I, I struggled a lot with um, negative thoughts mm. or like being in a car was like hard for me. Um, I would just constantly think like, you're going to wreck and die. I would envision horrible things happening. And I would be like, why? Wow. Like, why can't I just be normal? And so it took me just really uh, putting my health first and also like retraining my brain of like pushing those thoughts out and understanding that like, okay, is this true? Or is this just my brain doing this? It's just my brain. So, um, but I think it was very validating, but also I'm committed to just undoing those things. Mm. I think that anything, what he taught me is that anything in your brain that has gone wrong or is unhealthy, you can fix as long as you treat your brain right and, and you know, do some, I know hyperbaric oxygen therapy is really, really good. Nice. Um, making sure you're getting your omegas is extremely, extremely important because mm. that's like the food for your brain. Fish um, oils. Yes, your EPA and DHAs. And then um, lion's mane is also mm. extremely important for your brain. It's, really? Yes, it's it's proven in studies to um, connect neurological pathways, like rebuild them. So um, it can't, you know, I'm not sure, I don't want to quote this, but I, it can't cure Alzheimer's, let's say, mm -hmm. for an example. But let's say you're starting to kind of have memory issues. If you start taking lion's mane, like it will definitely halt the process. Or if wow. you have brain fog or like any anything neurological, it it's proven um, to help. So I think that's really important to, mm. to take. That's great to know. I, now I want to get a brain scan. I'm curious what my results would be. It sounds like it was really valuable to learn that about your brain it was so valuable very healing um and then i also learned about this thing called cptsd hmm. and so i have that and um that was kind of interesting to learn but also very validating um you know i guess to feel like okay those things did happen and i it's nothing wrong with me it was something that kind of happened to me mm -hmm. and so that made me feel like okay well I'm in control of my life now, so I can do the things to undo those patterns. And so I'm committed to that. I had a little lull with hmm. the little <laughs> moment, but- um, Back on track. Getting back on track, Love yeah. it, Abby, it's been a pleasure. Anything you wanna close pleasure. off with? No, that's pretty much it. I had a great conversation with you. It was very nice yeah, meeting you. Yeah, appreciate it. That was a very valuable conversation. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for watching guys as always, and I'll see you tomorrow.